Luke chapter 1, verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and there was no tongue. I'm sorry. Oh, no, there's no tongues. Look at verse 15, the same chapter. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And John didn't talk in tongues. He didn't even talk. So when Mary agree, greets Elizabeth, that's what the salutation, that's what she slewed in verse 40. Salutation is, hi, cousin Elizabeth. Mary is already now pregnant. Elizabeth has been pregnant in six months. The babe spoken here is John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit works from womb to womb in that verse explain that one have a charismatic get crazy over that verse this is the only time until the baptism of Jesus that John has <laughs> seen Jesus because John says when, when he's preaching he says, uh, he says something like we'll get to it later you know of whom I have not known and they were second cousins or cousins the reason B is that so they can't say that Jesus and John got off in a wilderness somewhere and wrote down some things and we're going to agree with each other. And then when I'm 30 years old, I'm going to show up and John, you know, you, you, you set the stage and they can't say that. Sometimes separation from your family is a godly event. Purposed by God. And that is exactly what happens here with John the Baptist and Jesus. They are related because it says, um, verse 36, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, talking to Mary. They are blood related. In G Jesus' cousin's line through his mother, there's a police, pre police, priest class which you have the order of in verse number five there was the days of Herod the king of Judah a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah go back and get the lesson we ran that course and to add another side note to it and his wife was the daughters of Aaron Elizabeth line ran right to Aaron not just to Levi but right to Aaron Moses and, and, and Miriam and Jochebed that's the line of Elizabeth and in that line is the Lord Jesus Christ his family his cousins Jesus' cousin went into the holy place and offered incense. That was his job. Forty-two. And she spake out with a loud voice, uh-oh, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You know we're going to park there. Put in P. Loud voice. 
overjoyed with happiness. The counter, the anti, it's when, you, when Jesus came to the maniac of Gadara and he spoke with a loud voice. You have a loud voice for God and you have a loud voice for Satan. Now, blessed. What on earth is blessed mean? You ever think about that? When, when somebody sneezes, you say, God bless you. What are you saying? Oh, let me go run to the dictionary. Why run to the dictionary? Oh, don't know what the word means. Never even thought about it. Run to your Bible. Hmm? Bible keeps saying blessed, 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 but it never tells me what it means. Yes, it does. Scripture with Scripture. Let's go to Genesis 30, 13. He wouldn't think blessed. And we'll read the definition first and I'll say what I have to say. Because it's funny. The Bible's funny. I love the Bible. It's got comedy in the Bible. 30. And if you know this story, you'll, it'd be <laughs> funny. 30. Verse number 13. <laughs> 13. And let me get in 30. I'm in 31. That would have been a good verse to read. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Asher means blessed, and blessed means happy. So Asher was one of the seven dwarfs. He was happy. There's the definition. And what a time to see the word happy in this chapter. If you know the story of this chapter. Leah is having a battle with her sister. And we're going to call out the handmaids. And poor old Jacob. He's just going to have a time just making babies. In the middle of all this. Blessed. They'll call me. Because I'm happy. Happy. Blessed be means happy. It says, Blessed art thou among women. Happy art thou among women. Leah was happy. Don't you see the cross references here? Two pregnant women are happy. Now, another thing. It said, Blessed art thou among women so they call her the blessed virgin mary she's not happy because in john chapter 4 she tells you what to do to the catholics whatever my son says do it not me she's not happy that entire populations of the world are have been have been perverse in her name. She's not happy. But see the Roman Catholic Church. Has the wrong woman. According to the Bible. They always get it wrong. Because they don't know their Bible. They don't even open their Bible. And they don't want you to open their Bible. Because if you were to open your Bible. Let's say Judges chapter 5. If you were to go to Judges chapter 5, which they don't want you to go, you would find out they got the wrong woman. And now the Catholic Church says thou shalt not kill. Do they not? Do they not hold those signs when, when an execution is about to happen in a state? Well, thou shalt not kill when it comes to the war that they started. Uh, forgive me. But Judges chapter 5, verse 24. It says, Blessed above women, <coughs> excuse me, shall Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, 
be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked her water and she gave him milk. Ooh, that's good. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the snail and her right hand to the worker, workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head. This woman killed a man. Brutally. And what does the Bible say about her? Blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Heber, the Canaanite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. Mary only got a blessing among women. Jael got the greater blessing. And she killed somebody. She killed an enemy of Israel. The Catholics have got the wrong woman. To be blessed. Why go for among women when you can go above women? Of all the women that dwell in tents where they're supposed to be dwelling, there was none like Jael. I believe Mary was a proper housewife, wife to Joseph and mother to the children. And Jael is better than her, according to the scripture. Luke one forty three. Luke one forty three. Moving right along. And whence is this to me, the mother of my Lord, should come to me. Humility. It's humility. The mother of my Lord. So it's Elizabeth talking to Mary. Because we're going to come along in a minute, we're going, in the Roman Catholic Church that I just told you, is going to switch, in the middle of a conversation, the speaker. Mary is the mother. Elizabeth acknowledges Jesus as Lord. Uh-oh. Elizabeth was not a Jehovah Witness. Ha-ha. And Mary came knocking to her door. Ha-ha. With Jesus. Ha ha. You just blew the Jehovah Witnesses out of water. You sunk my battleship, the whole game, and the whole fleet. And you were playing life. See, the Bible's simple. How do you miss that? And then the question is, why did you come here? That's a weird question. I mean, here there's cousins. Here they're, they're both pregnant. And it must be the, why are you here? Why should you come to me? But she's in humility. She, I mean, what honor that you are carrying the Lord God that you come to me. I'm not worthy. You know, in, in Jesus' ministry, there's one time somebody sent for me. He said, uh, somebody in my family or my servant was, was sick. And Jesus starts walking to that. He's no, ho, 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 ho. He sent another answer. I'm not worthy for you to be here, Lord. You just speak the word. And you know what Jesus said? I have found no such faith in all Israel. No. But the faith, and that was a Gentile. He says, he says, Lord, I'm not worthy. Just speak the word, and I know you can do it.
You talk about a forerunner before the ministry of Jesus Christ, and it's right here, the humidity. Elizabeth was no just American woman. You realize when she said, why should uh, Lord should come to me? Let's read. And whence is it to me that thou, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? You know what she's saying there? She has put hope and faith in what Mary said to her. The Jews tell Jesus, we be born of fornication. Mary explains this whole story to her and he's like, well, I'm not worthy for you to be in my house. And poor Zacharias is over there sitting in the corner and can't say a word. Because of unbelief. Elizabeth has showed more faith than her husband. Did you get that one? Can you imagine if, if Zacharias would have believed the angel and when we went through all that and go back and get the, get the outline? Can you imagine what he would be saying right now? What words that he could proclaim that his son is going to be the forerunner of Isaiah and here is the Lord in his house? In the womb? Of his wife's cousin? Who have been visited by the same angel. Now don't you think that Mary and Zacharias could have sat down and had some talk while Elizabeth sat there and served tea and listened? Don't you think that Mary would have got a beautiful impression of listening to Zacharias tell the story about the angel in the holy place? From where her baby came from? The most holy place? Where the prayer of the saints go up before God, Revelation says. You imagine the three of these people could actually all talk what that night, what that time would have been. But you see what unbelief does to you? One cannot speak. 44. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. A sign. For Jews require a sign. They are joy. They are signs. They are for Israel. There is life in a womb. It leaped. I think it says six months. This ain't just a kick. That baby did a tumble saw and did not get the cord wrapped around his head. And it wasn't gas or indigestion. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Happy is believing. Elizabeth's husband did not believe. Look at 120. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak unto the day that which things shall be performed. Because thou hast not believed my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. He's still got three more months to be able to speak. Elizabeth believes Mary's story. It's from the Lord. But 126, 126 says, and that. Six months the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Verse 19, 
And the angel answering unto him said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. Well, I don't believe the Bible's inspired. God inspired an angel. And Elizabeth is the one that told you. The things which were told her from the Lord. Who told her? The angel. There we go. 146. And Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord. That's wrong. And Mary said, My soul does. Wait a minute. Let's do what a particular te church teaches. My Lord does magnify me. I'm the Blessed Vir Virgin Mary. Come to me and I'll go to my son. She does not magnify herself. And remember I told you it said, verse 43, And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? That's Elizabeth speaking. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ear, the babe leaped in the the, uh, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. That's Elizabeth speaking. And blessed is she that uh, believed, with Mary that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. That's Elizabeth speaking about Mary and the angel. Now, what's the next three words? And Mary said, Who's speaking? Who's speaking? It says Mary. My soul does magnify the Lord. So who said my soul does magnify the Lord? Elizabeth done speaking. It says Mary starts speaking now. Why does the Roman Catholic Bible footnote say Elizabeth is talking? Run to it. How do you get Mary said and then you turn around and say this footnote is uh, Elizabeth is talking? I looked it up. That's where I got it from. The Roman Catholic Bible footnote says Elizabeth is talking. And I guess my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. I guess Elizabeth is still talking. So you get married, taken away, saying, my Savior. Because if Mary needs a Savior, capital S, then she's not immaculate, she ain't uh, sinless, and everything, they, the baloney they put on the sandwich for you. And you know what kind of cheese they use on their bologna sandwich. It's Swiss cheese because it's holy. And they'll use artificial bread that you buy in the store and not bread of the word. And we're going to stop there. And we're going to come back to what Mary said. But I want you to see that when we're talking about Elizabeth, the Roman Catholic Church said, and Mary said, and they put a footnote, my soul does magnify the Lord. That's Elizabeth speaking. What, what, what goes on here? Where do you get that from? How on earth do you change the Bible 
when the Bible says exactly what it says, and then you put a footnote right on top of it, and nobody goes, duh. And we'll pick up what Mary says next time.